Bevy Game Jam number four has started. And while I've also committed to doing Advent of Code, I do want to participate in this game jam. It runs for about a week until I believe the 9th. So that's from December 2nd to December 9th. And my personal goal is not really to win the game jam, but to succeed at my goal for the year, which was to ship a game on Steam. So really what my goal for this game jam is to use the theme to build a small game that feels fun that I can then spend maybe another week or so working on and feel good about having it as a small, simple game on Steam. So with that in mind, there's a couple of rules that we need to follow here. First, of course, is the theme. Most game jams have a theme and you're kind of expected to do something related to it. In this case, the theme is that's a lot of entities, which can be interpreted kind of however you want. Submissions must be made with the Bevy game engine. And other than that, there's a bunch of other rules that are pretty typical for a game jam. One thing I figured out from participating in previous game jams, or specifically a previous Bevy game jam, is that if you don't have a web build of your game, you kind of don't get players, which is something they now include in the soft rules. So in the past, jam entries with a web build have gotten many more players, which means that you get many more votes, which means that you have a better chance of actually, you know, scoring well. They do want the builds to be able to run on Mac, Windows, and Linux, although that's not a hard rule. So if you do something and something works out on like just Linux or something, everything's fine. But this is what I'm going to focus on in the first devlog, getting everything built for Windows, Mac, Linux, and Wasm. At the end of the jam, there are three things to vote on, whether it was fun, whether the presentation created a compelling experience, and how well the game fits the theme. The sum of the votes for these criteria then create the winner. I personally am not expecting to win because there are a lot of people that do this jam that are way more experienced than I am. So let's say your goal is to actually do this. What are your options for getting started? Obviously, you could build out your own build pipeline right? Building Bevy is as easy as doing cargo build, but then you have to deal with assets, packaging, zip files. The Bevy game jam is hosted on itch, so you have to get it to itch somehow. And to my knowledge, there are two major solutions for setting up CI CD in a Bevy specific way. One is official. It's a Bevy engine slash Bevy GitHub CI template. And that's probably what I'm going to end up with today. And then the other one is much heavier and includes more. So it's the Bevy game template by Niklas EI or Niklas, Niklas, also the maintainer of wonderful crates like Bevy Asset Loader. And basically what, we're, what we would be looking to get out of this is CI for GitHub Actions that we don't have to write ourselves because writing CI, as we'll find out in a second, especially for all these platforms, is kind of hectic. Now, in the future, I would love to create a new video about using Cargo Disk for this, but because this is a game jam and because I actually have to get some work done, I'm going to go with one of these solutions and I'll go with a Cargo Disk or other solution in the future. So my plan is to go with the simpler of the two, the Bevy GitHub CI template, because I tend to like piecemealing things together more than I like giant put together boilerplates. So this repo creates two workflows, CI and release. CI runs on every commit and every PR targeting main. It uses Rust stable on Linux with a cache between different executions, which is great, so it'll run faster. And it runs Cargo Test, Cargo Clippy, and Cargo Format all checked. There's a note here that if we use Nightly, we have to update the CI.yaml. We'll look at that in a second. So the release runs on every tag, so we are gonna have to run git tag to get a release here. It builds for Linux and Windows a zip archive containing the executable and the assets folder, which is great. For macOS, a DMG image with a dot app containing the assets. And for Wasm, a zip archive with the Wasm binary, the JS bindings, and an HTML5 and an HTML file loading it in the assets. So this is roughly what I need to do, and I do want to build for all of these platforms. The result creates a release in GitHub, which is wonderful. That is first and foremost, probably the place that I'll do releases the most. And then using the workflows in our project, we will have to, there's an index.html for web builds, that's great. We need to change an environment variable in the release.yaml. We will have an assets folder, so we do need to create one, or this will fail, potentially and then make sure our workflow permissions are set up correctly. It looks like there's also potentially an automatic push to itch.io, which is great. Itch.io does have a CLI that you can use, and I assume that's what's being used here. We'll have to create an API key. Butler is the name of the CLI, so that is what we're doing here. So all this is great, and I'll clone this into that's a lot. I'm naming my game that's a parking lot of entities because I think my idea is basically going to be that you're a, a valet and there's a lot of entities with say cars and things coming and you need to go park them and it's going to be more of a puzzle game. I don't know because it's not a future dev lot yet. <laughs> so if you've never seen GitHub CI, push and pull 
This is event triggers. So basically, whenever we push to the main branch or whenever we have a pull request for the main branch, this CI will run. There's an environment variable here for cargo terminal colors. The jobs are what will run in a row. So we've got a cargo test. This uses Ubuntu latest. We'll time out after 30 minutes. Checkout uses actions cache. I think actions cache is something that I would move away from in the future, but it's fine for us for now. Should still work. We install the Rust toolchain using a different action. This does sudo apt-get update and install, and then runs a cargo test. I'm okay with that. That works for me. Clippy looks like it does pretty much the same thing. These are all going to be YAML declarations for each of the steps. So the way a GitHub action works is there's this jobs key. Then these are the names of the jobs. And then there's steps for each of the jobs. And those will show up in the UI like we'll see in, in a minute here. So we've got the format for cargo format, yada, yada. Wonderful. Now, I think I'm going to have to put a Rust format in this project because I use a weird Rust format. And I use a weird Rust format specifically for videos and things like that and being able to copy paste code into blog posts. So I'm just going to keep that in there so that this is running in CI as well. And then we can take a look at the release GitHub action as well. So on push to any tag. So however we want to tag this will go up. Bevy CI GitHub template is not going to be our binary name. Let's call this that's a lot of entities. So that's a parking lot of entities is going to be our crate name. We've got the bevy typical optimized bevies libraries in dev configuration happening in cargo toml, which is great. There's a readme here. I think I'll leave the readme for now so that it gets checked in the first time. And we need to change the name of this to that's a parking lot of entities. The itch target is going to be, I think my itch username is this and the game name is going to be the same game. We don't have a lib.rs in here, so I'm not worried about it. Looks like we've got get tag, wasm bind gen, cargo release build for wasm. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. And then for Ubuntu, probably just a native build, zips it up. Same for Mac, same for Windows. Looks like we build for Mac, Intel, and Mac Silicon. Check if update to itch is configured. We do need to set this environment variable. And we need to set this API key too. So I can create a new project. Uh, I clearly don't have payment configured. I don't sell things on itch, so that's fine. The title is going to be, that's a parking lot of entities. Cool, Chris Piscardi, itch, that's a parking lot of entities. I'm just going to describe it as a puzzle game. This is going to be a game kind of project, downloadable HTML. I think I'm going to set this to HTML to start with so that it plays on itch. Um, I don't know if doing this between prototype and in development is going to matter. Yada, yada, yada. Everything's great. We can set the viewport dimensions later, I'm assuming. Let's let them full screen it. Automatically start on page load. I don't know if we'll be able to run on mobile phones, so we won't do it. Uh, can we get a puzzle genre in here? Puzzle. Tags, I don't know yet. Maybe Bevy Game Jam. App Store links we don't have yet. Save and view. There's a problem loading the project because there's no file embedded. That's totally fine. If we go into settings, there's this API keys on the left. Got to do the password dance. Got to generate a new API key. And then we leave that page before we leak our key. Create a new repository on GitHub. Name it that's a lot uh, or that's a parking lot of entities. Make it public because this is going to be a public thing. Now we've got it. Settings, secrets and variables, actions, repository secrets. I don't remember what to name this. Looks like Butler credentials here. So we're gonna name this Butler credentials and I'll paste in the secret. Important to know that these secrets are not passed to pull requests from forks. So we should be just fine leaving this in here. I'm gonna remove the old git history because I wanna start fresh from my own new project with a single commit. We'll initialize that, dump our remote in. I need to remember to remove this asset here. Make sure it runs. Ooh, this is something interesting too. So allow Clippy lints. Uh, these can go in our cargo toml now. So I think this is all we need. Lints.clippy type complexity and too many arguments. And then we can get rid of this line and save that. So if we look at what we've got here, everything's set up. I've replaced the ducky with a little Ferris. I've pushed up my commits. I've tagged. So this triggers the release action and then pushed up the tags using git push tags. So if I use my little subcommand here, git lg, you can see that I've initialized the project. I did the first run. I added a little Rust format file in here. That's this right here, .rustformat.toml. That will be used in CI. So I don't need to worry about my local configuration differing from CI anymore. And then I had to run this a couple of times to get the whole workflow to work. So that's why we've got tag v1, tag v2, and tag v3, which is the current push. You can see that it's now on itch. So I can click run game 
and this is actually going to be a little too small to show the game. I think the defaults for Bevy for Wasm are like 720p or maybe it was 1280 or something. I don't know. In any case, the actions pushed up all of the binaries and all of the DMGs and all of the everythings. So I've got a Linux build, Mac OS, Apple, Mac OS, Intel, Wasm, which is running on the browser right now, and also Windows. So I'll have to check a bunch of these to make sure they work. I actually can't check the Intel because I don't think I have an Intel Mac anymore. And this is all a uh, draft, so nobody can actually go see it. And we can see some comments from uh, an older game jam that I participated in that uh, was about two years ago. It was also a bevy game jam back when I was definitely still learning some of this stuff. And we have the event for all of our binaries getting uploaded here. So it's all working now. And you can see that I did push a couple of times. These down here, the main pushes are just code pushes. That runs CI. CI runs tests, Clippy, and Rust format checks. So if you click into these actions, you can see cargo format here. For example, this is because I have a couple of things set that are only available on nightly. And then I don't think I actually have many tests here if there are any at all. So yeah, we got no tests here. We should have some at some point, but that runs on every push. And then when we tag it like this 003 here, it runs this one, which is a couple of different steps. Release Wasm, release Linux, we release Windows and both Mac OSs. It's also got this little check to see if we should upload to itch job in here. And then finally, it does actually upload to itch. And if you open these logs, you can check all the data and see where it's going and see what's been built and sent. So very cool all around working very well. And I'm looking forward to using this moving forward. Uh, we'll also note that on the repo itself, we have releases also running through that same GitHub action setup. So we've got binaries for everything and the WASM downloadable. Everything's great. So this is where I'm going to put my game. It is going to be open source. I don't quite know what I'm going to do. I have an idea. I have mechanics that I want to implement. It's going to be a bit of a puzzle game. And I'll see you in the next devlog where we will talk about some of that stuff and maybe some interesting crates to use to get started. Have a great rest of your day and I'll see you in the next one.